Hi everybody, Rob here from Pryor Studios and welcome to this brief introduction video to the new product that I've released with uh, the Pixel Lab. Now, there's been a lot of talk uh, since um, the Reflections channel uh, made a, made its kind of debut in Cinema 4D and people started kind of umming and ahhing about what to do with it, how it worked and different people have kind of done some tutorials and training to try and give you an idea. Um, but one thing that was lacking is that some of the material packs or texture packs as some people call them, although tend to be not actually have any textures in, um, don't make the most of the reflectance channel. Um, so we wanted to put together something that really kind of makes the most of it and has that kind of a, just a really strong set for architectural visualization for product viz and a few kind of wilder and wacky materials but really just kind of a, a set of i think there's 340 odd um uh, different materials for all different uses so if you've bought it you download it and you stick it in the normal um the the lib.4d file goes in your uh, browser folder uh, in cinema 4d and uh, there should be a readme file that comes with it that tells you all of the in installation parts Anyway, once that's done and you open up Cinema 4D again, you can go to your content browser and you should see this procedural material pack in here. Um, and inside, let's just give ourselves a bit more room. You can see it's broken down into some subfolders just to give you a better idea of what's going on. So let's take a look at one of them and just see how they work. Let's look at tiles and patterns. There's a few really nice ones here. Um, so we've got few things going on. Some of these are, are kind of fun, but uh, and, and a couple of daft ones which will find a home somewhere, um, but most of them are particularly useful. And uh, if I scroll through these, you can see them. Um, so let's look at maybe this stone tiles texture here. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drag that into my material manager. If I go back to my object, I'm just gonna drop it onto my object here, uh, an outer ball. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on interactive render region just so we can see this as I talk to it um, about it. So the materials themselves, if I open this up and bring in uh, the material editor, uh, I can show you what's going on. So we've got a bit of bump and the bump is using, uh, this in this instance it's a fusion so it's got a couple of channels going on here. Um, some for certain kind of overall surface pocking, others for the, the tiles themselves. Um, but really what's going on is the, the important part is in the reflectance channel. Um, and this is going to be the same for almost all of these materials. Now if we look inside the reflectance channel we can see we've got two layers. We've got one for the diffuse channel which is the colour channel. Uh, and we have a layer for the shine so we've got kind of a clear coat on there. Although in this case, it doesn't act as a clear coat might on say a car paint, although there are a load of car paints in the pack, uh, which should help you um, do those kind of materials as well. This one, if I select it here, you can see we've got quite a, a hard, sharp highlight, uh, but this is mostly driven by another fusion uh, inside a layer mask. And this fusion is a, a combination of, you can see the, the tile pattern itself and a Fresnel. And this gives us kind of a, a nice highlight around the edge, as you can see in the main render window here. Uh, as I'll just let this clear up for a minute, I'll stop moving my cursor. So you can see around the edge, kind of perpendicular to our field of view, you get a kind of a, a just a bit of a sheen and a little bit of highlights popping off those, uh, like you would see if there was a, if you were looking at glancing angles, say in a kitchen. Uh, and these were tiles on the wall and there was a window in front of you. You get that kind of a look. Uh, and the materials all work in a similar fashion to this. So let's just go back to our content browser and let's look at another one. Let's look at a different subsection. Let's go for maybe one of the metals. So we've got a load of anodized metals in here and these are all kind of physically accurate. And uh, these are all built on real world um, properties. Uh, we've got some carbon corrugated and we've got all sorts of things. Let's have a look at one of the corrugated metals here. And this one's a rusty one. So I'm just going to bolt drag over the top of that stone. And that just replaces it for us. Uh, and I'll just let this render away. Uh, and while that's rendering, uh, because this is a physically accurate metal, you can see it's um, going to take a little bit longer. 
Now, what you're seeing here is uh, mostly due to the scale. So when you have one of those kind of corrugated metal sheets that are used for like lean-to roofs and things like that, they're made out of like flattened hammered little sec sections of um, metal. And here you're seeing them quite big, which is why you're seeing those fragmented pieces of metal beneath the rust. Uh, and all you need to do to make this look right in your scene is fit it to your scale. Now, sometimes you'll want to do that just by a, a simple tiling of your material on your object. Other times you won't want to go in and change the scale uh, in the material itself. Um, the rust, I think on this one, is driven in a couple of ways. Let's just bring this material in. Let's look at the dirt. So basic color, and mostly it's driven by a gradient here. And you can see the gradient has um, so quite a lot of turbulence involved, which is what gives us this patchiness. Okay, let's take another look at another example. Let's go for, there's quite a few luminance uh, ones in here. Now the fires are particularly interesting, I think. And uh, the fires are built to animate, uh, even got gas in there. Uh, so let's just drag that onto there and we'll let it render. Now, the render actually happens quite quickly and you can already see the, the bar inside that lets us see subsurface scattering. Um, now the flames obviously are on the base and this sphere that we've got aren't going to look great. I think they be they look best on a cylinder. Um, so if you want to have a flame, either use like a, a pyramid or a cylinder, that works best. But these are animated. If you want to get a preview of the, the animation that these are running, um, you can just click in here and choose animate and this will take a minute but and I'm rendering over here in our uh, preview as well our interactive preview so it's going to take a while but you'll find that this will animate itself and you get a really good preview of how that moves uh, which is quite lovely so luminance we've got LEDs and a few other things going on here um, there's quite a good selection uh, a couple of nice suns and plasma balls that kind of stuff uh, and let's have a look at uh, maybe some of the hard classes or glass transparent and ice, that's a good one. Okay, so again, these are uh, mostly physically accurate. They're all based on real world properties. And there's some fun ones like holographs and things like that. And let's have there's some puddles. And these are quite good for kind of doing uh, puddles or small ponds, things like that there. Again, you could scale them up and use them in other places. But let's look at one of the more accurate ones. So let's just go for a, a diamond or a crown glass. Actually, crown glass is quite quick at rendering, so let's use that one. We'll pop that on there. Uh, and the crown glass, you can see it's got its refraction set up. You can see the transparency is set up. If we open up the material, just double click that bring it in you can see what's going on so here we've got a combination of bump reflectance and transparency uh, and you have to do this is the only only kind of material really where you have to have another channel active um, some use luminance some use, use transparency but all of the materials in this pack use the reflectance channel to drive any color information the bump is purely just to get a little bit of that slight uh, irregularity that you might get and it's quite a large scale you can see here and it's a very very low level there's hardly in there's hardly any intensity there at all uh, it's purely just to break up so it doesn't look quite so perfectly CG because you know even really nice glass in high-end kind of like folding doors and all that kind of stuff that, that it's never a hundred percent perfect so that's why that slight bit of bump is in there and you can see it renders really quick, looks really nice. Ignore the fact that there's a, a grey ball behind this one. Um, if you look at the one on the floor, if I crank up the quality level here, um, you'll see it re-render. The re is pretty quick. Uh, so if you're ever in need of a really good glass, uh, and don't forget, if you look to the right, there's diamond, ethanol, all these things. Um, they're all really good and they'll work really well. Uh, if you want cheapy glass, uh, the flint one's good for that. Um, fast glass now this one is very similar in appearance to the crown glass uh, except for uh, it renders even quicker we also have some beer bottles which look particularly dark and non-transparent in here um, but when you stick them on 
a object they'll work really well okay so let's go back and have a look at one more section um, just to give you a quick overview of what's going on here let's look at the miscellaneous so here I tried to do a few materials that were kind of useful but didn't live in a particular section so we've got loads of car paints and um, some with kind of really big fleck like the metal flake uh, it's quite large bits are kind of 70s uh, look a bit like bowling balls in places and some of them less intense but equally um, as realistic and we've got a few things here um, that are also really good so talking about um, bowling balls let's do one of these bowling ball materials this is uh, not a car paint this is particularly set up just for a kind of a fun bowling ball uh, and there's some Fresnel fall off in the color uh, on this one and I'll, let, I'll just let it render and then I'll talk to you about the actual setup for it uh, and that's really you can just drag them onto your objects and use them as are as they are um, but if you want to delve in and make a few adjustments you can do very easily so let's just double click this open it up so the bump you can see there's a bit of bump and this is quite hopefully you can see this in the video but it's very contrasty and it's more about pitting and um, so there's kind of surface pitting which you can just make out in that preview render but again all the real magic is happening in the reflectance channel you can see there's no color going on at all um, and that's the kind of the, the the joy of using these kind of materials and using the reflectance channel you can do it all in here so we've got diffuse which is our basic color so this is the underlying kind of pink noise and this is a, a fusion so we've got one layer here driven by a fusion uh, which is a uh, just a simple marble shader and then a simple noise shader if we go back we've got some incidents so this is kind of our color fall off um, which is also has a bit of a galaxy in here uh, which just helps give that kind of bubble surface look then we've got some metal flakes or flex um, and they're just using a star field as a mask so they're kind of continuous all the way around then we've got some gloss uh, which you can see here is more like a kind of a, a harsh specular with a little bit of fall off at the edge there and then overall shine which is less intense but more even over the surface um, so and you can mix these in different ways uh, obviously you can change the intensity if you want to up the amount of gloss you can always increase that gloss level okay so that's been a, a quick rundown of all these materials uh, and there's bucket loads more that we haven't looked at like I say there's 340 odd of these materials we've got you know, cladding wood cladding um, and you know wooden floorboards all sorts of things going on here um, various different woods you know, quil quilted maple I'm particularly fond of uh, even wood chip wallpaper if you're doing a kind of a 70s recreation lots of metals which you've already seen but let's just have a quick rundown uh, through some of these uh, there's also a set of these I should probably mention as well which are physical so we've got these uh, tungstens and titaniums and silvers all those kind of things and they're all physically based they've all got the right kind of um, attributes that you would find in the real world okay so that's been a little look at the procedural materials pack and I hope you enjoy it I had good fun making it and we've enjoyed testing it and getting it together uh, so thanks very much if you've got any questions either go to the pixel lab and the support page and let them know or you can always drop me a line if you want um, and i'll see you all again in another video soon thanks very much i've been rob bye, -bye.